Our reading today comes from Matthew's Gospel, uh, today being Palm Sunday. So the context of today's reading is that um, in the Synoptic Gospels, the entry into Jerusalem is preceded by a healing of uh, a blind man or blind men. In Matthew, we have the healing of two blind men, and in Mark and in Luke, we have a single man, uh, sometimes named as Bartimaeus. So there is restoring of sight and the fact that that person then leaps up and follows Jesus with the crowd excitedly on the approach into Jerusalem. So Matthew's account of the triumphant entry. Chapter 21 and verses 1 to 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie her and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them. And then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise God! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? the people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from the Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. So, we have a scene here which um, is easy to idealise, but we have a scene of great crowd acclamation. It's amazing, isn't it, when a crowd of people uh, all speak with one voice. The power, the infectious passion that that gives you, whether that's a concert or a theatre production or, or anything really, where people, a football match, somewhere where people are all singing the same song and there is a unity and a brotherhood and a sisterhood that comes from being in a place with fellow human beings who are full of excitement, full of passion for something and uh, have a great sense of joy and expectation about something too, basically if people are just enjoying themselves. And sure enough, there will have been many people in that crowd who were there caught up in the moment, caught up in this wonderful, exciting thing uh, and asking the question, who is this? And Matthew's phrase I love, the whole city was thrown into uproar. Well, you know, the whole city? I mean, this was a, um, a city at the time of the festival. Um, many, many, many hundreds, if not thousands of people would have been flooding into the city at this time. Imagine a large open air rock theatre uh, um, uh, festival and how people would be flooding in from all sorts of different entries. The one entry isn't really, you know, going to make the whole city go into an uproar. But it's a stylized and idealized view of the fact that, yeah, people got a sense of who Jesus was. Um, and it was really whipped up into a huge fervor. Um, and so much so, of course, that it caused um, the tipping edge in the Synoptic Gospels, at least, for the religious authorities, because the, here was this man causing such an uproar. In John's Gospel, of course, um, it was really the tipping edge because... Um, the entry into Jerusalem comes after the raising of Lazarus. And he, at that point, the, decided, the um, authorities had already decided, well, we've got to do something to shut this guy up because um, the people are talking about this thing, which is just beyond words, beyond any sort of understanding or belief. Um, he's just becoming too popular. Um, and uh, in one of the, the Gospels where it's told how the... Um, the they say to him, well, you know, tell them everyone to be quiet. Um, and Jesus says, well, if I did, even the stone would start to cry out. There is such excitement here. So, it's a great and wonderful scene. But, of course, it all turns south very shortly. 
And I suppose what's interesting is that juxtaposition of the way in which a crowd can be whipped up into something that it believes to be the truth and go along with that for a moment, a transient moment, and to compare that with the idea of actually understanding who Jesus is at a personal level rather than a corporate crowd level. For that's the distinction, isn't it? Because clearly um, crowds can be whipped up into great excitement in the moment, but of course that moment can easily pass. And so it's not something that lasts for a very long time, whereas a personal relationship with somebody is quite different. It will transcend not only uh, long periods of time, but also times of difficulty, uh, times of uh, stress, and all sorts of things that will actually um, uh, make things uh, of, that are of temporary nature just pass away. So it's really a um, very different experience. Um, and for you and I, whilst we may get caught up in the moment, in our uh, religious observances, in the things that we do and the experiences we have, these mountaintop experiences sometimes, it is the personal relationship that God wants with us, rather than this transient, attractive, short-term adherence to anything that God is doing. There may well be things that we find attractive or uh, fit in with our view of the world, but of course that's precisely the difference that Jesus comes to make. But this isn't about personal taste. Uh, we're not being offered something from a menu here. Um, rather, it is that God the God who made us has come to us and if we see that then there is indeed joy but it's very different from just the fickle nature of a crowd crying with excitement because something wonderful is happening caught up in the moment because something wonderful is happening I mean that is all good and great but it's very temporary it's a bit like the parable of the weeds isn't it the sower in the sense of uh, yeah how deep does that relationship actually go Will it be something that sustains you? Um, it has to connect at a deep and personal level. And for each of us, of course, that's exactly what Jesus did in coming and in dying for us to make it a personal 